What's up everybody? It's Travis here from Travis.media. So today I want to share with you my absolute favorite Udemy course as a developer in 2021. So if this is the first time you've come across one of my videos, my name is Travis. I'm a self-taught software developer of about five years. I've gone from agency work to freelancing full-time to now in the corporate space working in some pretty big projects. And the point of this whole channel is to share the knowledge that I've learned along the way to up and coming developers and developers looking to level up. If that interests you at all, consider hitting that subscribe button below. All right, so I'm a big fan of Udemy. I got a ton of courses and I use it a lot. I never finish a course. I don't think anybody ever finishes a course, but I have a lot of courses and I revisit it often to learn certain things that I'm working on. And out of all the courses I visited or maybe bought this year, there's one course that really stood out to me. And I liked it so much, I wanted to do a whole video on it because it's very thoughtful, it's very practical, and frankly, it involves a lot of things I never considered doing. Now the language for this course is Python. Now Python is everywhere. I know the first thing you might be thinking is like Django or web development, but scrap all of that. Python in cloud computing and DevOps is huge right now. And it's almost a requirement. If you look up any job on LinkedIn for like AWS developer, AWS architect, something like that, you gotta know Python or another scripting language like Go or maybe C Sharp or something like that. But almost everything is requiring some knowledge of Python. Now I've been using Python a lot for the past year in the work I've been doing, scripting, automating, and just providing solutions for things that need to be done. And Python's the perfect thing for those tasks. So if you haven't considered learning Python, now may be the time to do it. It's really in demand. And if you already know Python, but you haven't built a lot of really neat practical projects that may give you ideas in your day-to-day -day work, this course is for you as well. And what I'm gonna do in this video, and I'm gonna keep it brief, I'm gonna introduce the course, and then I'm gonna show you a couple of projects that I built from it that I think are really, really neat, and then point out some of my favorite things about it. All right, so let's introduce the course. The course is called 100 Days of Code, the Complete Python Pro Bootcamp for 2021. It's by Angela Yu, one of my favorite instructors right now. She's that lady that had all the YouTube ads that were like, have you ever wanted to learn to code? And I always saw that ad, I never took any of her courses. This is actually, this is the second one. I think I did one of her previous courses, but this one is phenomenal. She puts so much detail, so much effort into every project. And if you think about it, if there's 100 days of code here, there's a hundred projects. You're going to start out with just basic console apps to learn Python, but a few lessons into it, things ramp up and you start to build all kinds of fun stuff. Let's look at a few things of interest that you would be building. So like I said, it starts out pretty easy. You build things like a calculator, blackjack, hangman, and like a simple console app coffee maker. That's just to get the basics of Python. Then you switch into the intermediate projects, which include like Pong and Snake, games like that. And then you jump into GUI apps, which I found fascinating because I can build these rather quickly. And these are really helpful with day-to-day -day activities like conversions or things that you have to get on the internet and do. You can just authenticate with an API, set up some calls and do it all from a GUI. Or you can use it to manage your file system. Lots of use cases for GUI apps. All right, flashcards, uh, quiz app. And then you jump into the API stuff. So you build an um, ISS tracker, international space station tracker. So it'll actually text you or email you when that space station comes over your location. So you can get a text or an email that says, hey, tonight space station's flying over it. 8.30 p.m., um, a stock tracker, and some other API stuff. Then you jump into scraping, and that's gonna be with Beautiful Soup and Selenium. Now, Selenium's something I've never messed with, and I absolutely loved it, and I can see so many use cases for it. Um, you do a flight deals project, you do this top 20 songs. I'm actually gonna show you that in a minute. You learn how to interact with Google Sheets, which is really helpful. Also, being able to spit out CSV format with Python is, is really helpful, too. Um, and then you move into advanced. Now there's more projects than all of this, but this is just a quick overview. Um, then you move into advanced. So you, you do a project um, automating job applications on LinkedIn, which is really neat. Then you explore the Spotify and the Twitter API. And it's really neat, this top 20 songs that you learned in Intermediate, you use those to populate playlists on Spotify. Then you build some bots, you jump into Flask, which is web development, and then straight into data science, uh, pandas, matplotlib, things like that, machine learning, and then you have this big blog 
section in the advanced. And then at the very end of it, she gives you a lot of projects that you build on your own. So like I said, very, very practical. If you're going to be using Python day to day, this course will open up your mind to all of the possibilities. Now, let me show you a couple of apps that we did build. And just a quick reminder, these are just a handful of apps that I thought were fun to build. So the first one here is a basic mile to kilometer converter desktop app. And this falls in the easy category and helps you understand TK Enter and things like how to lay all of this out in a grid within this user interface. So this is to the left, this is to the right, things like that, and how to do basic calculations. So this app is really simple. I just type in, hey, 10 miles is equal to 16.0934 kilometers. Now this may not seem beneficial to you, but if there are conversions and things that you do every day at your job or simple tasks that a desktop app like this would help you out with, it's very trivial to build and run when you need it. So app number two is this Pomodoro timer. Now you might be like, I can get this anywhere. I can get this on the app store. I can download this anywhere. Why do I need to build this? Well, there's a satisfaction in building things yourself and using your own tools. So I thought this was really neat. It takes that simple kilometer to desktop app and steps you up a notch to a more advanced app. So this app, when I hit start, it's going to count down uh, 25 minutes. And if you know what Pomodoro apps do, you're supposed to focus for 25 minutes. And then when it stops, I think you get a five five minute break, I think it is. And it runs three times. So focus for 25 minutes, take a five minute break, come back. And this app does it for you. So when you hit start, it's going to take you down to zero and then it's going to start that five minutes. Then it's going to start the 25 minutes and that's how it works. Okay. App number three is a password manager. This was a lot of fun. And actually I'm looking to build this out a little better. Um, currently what happens is currently you have this data.json file. And it's gonna have it's gonna store your password. So Amazon, this is my email, this is my password. No, this is not real. It's generated by the app. Uh, Google, Facebook, Flywheel, just things that I'm I'm using to test. It's gonna store it here in this data.json. I'd like to take this and either encrypt it or perhaps push it up to S3 and let it sit there. Maybe try out the bcrypt package. It's a lot of stuff I could do here to kind of have my own password manager. Now here's how it works. So let's say I'm signing up for Netflix and I need to generate a new password. So this is going to generate me a password and I can hit add. As soon as I hit add, it's going to add it to my JSON here. Add. Great. So here's my Netflix email and password. So next time I log into Netflix, what's my password? I can type in here. I can put Netflix and I hit search and it's going to find it and say your email is this and your password is this. That's the gist of it. Really, really fun app and one that I think I'm, again, going to build out into a more complex desktop app. And again, yeah, I could use LastPass and I do use LastPass. But again, there's a joy in using things that you built with your own hands or your mind, I guess. Now, the fourth app I'm going to show here, we actually use Selenium to open up Python.org and grab this list of upcoming events and spit out that data in JSON format. So let me show you how that works. So I'm going to close this. Selenium is actually going to open up a browser for us. So let me run it here, python main.py, and it should open up a browser, grab that information, and list out the JSON here in the terminal. Slide this over a little bit. So it's opening up a web browser. It's grabbing that info. It's going to close the browser and list out the JSON. Check this out. So here is my list of upcoming events. Pretty cool. Selenium is very, very powerful. Some of the other things you do with it, it just kind of blew my mind. Again, because I didn't have any experience with it and Python made it really easy. Now, another app I want to show you is going to be with web scraping. I think this is with Beautiful Soup. But anyway, we're going to take this URL, this billboard.com slash charts slash hot 100. And you can punch in any date. Like if I go to that website, you can basically take any week since I don't know what the beginning of it is, but let's say I'm going to choose the week of like, like July something 2003 or something. You can punch in a date and it's going to give you the top 100 songs from that time. So if I come back 2021 0206 as part of my URL. So following the logic here with this app, we can actually type in a date and pull whatever the top 100 songs are. We're going to scrape this page. We're going to grab all of the titles and list it out in a text file. So let's run this.
And what's really fun about this, and this is going back to what I said, she's very thorough in her projects. Like she doesn't just do some simple to-do list or something like that and, and move on to something else. Some of the stuff is very well thought out. So you're going to take this 100, this top 100, you're going to use the Spotify API to create a playlist. So you're going to take this 100 and using Python, you're going to say, hey, Spotify, here's my 100 songs through the API. Here's my 100 songs. Make a playlist. Boom. And your playlist is made. So I think that's enough. I got some other stuff in here I could show you. But those were a lot of fun. Um, I didn't get into the Flask and all of that. I already know Flask and I already know web development pretty well. So I didn't get into all that. I do want to get into some database stuff um, just as a refresher. But I hope you like these examples. Well, I hope that was helpful. If it was, do me a favor and hit that like button below. And if you're looking to learn Python or go deeper with Python this year, then I think this might be the perfect course for you. So as always, thank you for watching and I hope you have a great day.